Hey guys, welcome back to another review, or well, I should say a reflection, on the Tide 2 walkthrough for the channel. I'm Blue Falcon Gaming, and um, this one's a little bit special to me because Tide 2 is a game I really grew up with. It's not as big of a role as Crash was, or even Sonic at a point, but Tide 2 is really like one of those like good middle-of-the-road platforming games that... um. You know, if you got a little free time in the, in the day when you was younger, I would just sit down and play it. And really, with Thai 2, I, um, really just Thai in general, I really enjoy the, um, I guess a sense of, sense of, I don't know, how, how would you put it? Maybe like home, hominess, something like that. Just like the game is made by developers that actually live in, Australia so they can make all the jokes and all these little funny one-liners that we wouldn't understand as Americans but to them it's like well we can be making fun of them and being stereotypical but it makes sense because the people that made the game are actually from the place that they're making the game from but enough of the backstory um I just think that the game is um it's really fun um having the different boomerangs this time around gives you a little more variety with the gameplay instead of just using certain boomerangs that are required for the story. Kind of like Ty one when I get into that walkthrough review later on. Um, just actually not having to rely on just two or three boomerangs and then that just be it. Then the other like six or seven never get used. With this game... Rather than it being a like level based type of game where it's like you'll 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 have a hub world and you just go into like a little portal that goes into a level and then you co complete objectives in that level and then you go back and for the rest of the story, this game is more so mission based because of the fact that you know in inside the story, Ty and his friends end up making a like a rescue rescue type organization, so they just go around. Doing a little task and stuff, helping out the people of the town, Burmudgee, and the uh, surrounding Southern Rivers. So, a lot of this is is that you will be playing. Um, you'll be you'll be doing a variety of things. You'll still do general like platforming levels, like this right here that you see. This is um the level before the second boss, Buster, which is probably one of my favorite levels in the entire series, let alone tie two, and uh, you um you'll just go around, you'll go from start to finish doing whatever the level requires you to do. So sometimes you'll be in like this they call them bunyips, like that's what they call them in this game. And this is the thermal one, I believe. This one lets you shoot water, and you can even swim in lava with the suit, and then you'll have other ones like the battle bunyip, the shadow bunyip, the um lifter bunyip. And they offer a little bit of variety with the missions, because not all missions will be seen with Ty walking. Sometimes you might be on a plane carrying cargo, or you might be um, picking up sheep or crocodiles and tagging them and stuff like that. And then you'll have your traditional levels where you just go around like a, like a little area, and you'll just go around and just help out. You'll get to the end or help out whoever requires you to complete the mission and stuff like that. And then you have your bosses and stuff. Your boss Cass, Fluffy, and you have two other bosses in this game, which... They have their own separate parts in the in the playthrough and stuff like that. So, yeah, I um I think that doing this playthrough is actually a lot of fun because it's been a while since I played Tie Two. Um, this game is actually is not the game was originally on the PS2. This is not the PS2 version. This is actually the um I believe this is the PS4 version. When I get into the recording part, I'll explain more about what happened with this because this. Doing this walkthrough was probably out of all of the games I've walked through so far. It was probably the most annoying, but for other reasons I'll get into in a bit. But um, yeah, I think that um the mission structure works really well because with Ty One it had some issues with some of the levels being too open ended, and when you try and comp when you try and com um combine open endedness with collect-a-thon type gameplay where you have to go around and collect everything to get it through the level and stuff it can make the levels drag on too long and they don't be as enjoyable because with this game a lot of the levels don't overstay their welcome they're generally short there's like two levels that are really long but 
they're um they're they're enjoyable and they break them up with different missions. It's not just one mission in this big level. You'll have probably like one main mission and like two or three side missions that you can do if you want um to collect uh more opals and get more boomerangs. So back to the boomerangs for a second. This game has I want to say maybe double the amount of boomerangs that Ty One has with Sly, his brother. You can go to his range shop and you can actually go and buy new boomerangs and stuff like that. And the upgrades are much better than just using the standard boomerangs you get from his parents in Burramungi. Bur so, like you see me here, I believe I'm using the, um, I think it's the Mega Ring. Oh, not the Omega Ring. Yeah, I think it's the Mega Ring. I know the Omega Ring, the Omega Ring shoots, it's kind of like the multi ring. It's like shoots a whole bunch of rings, but they actually lock on to any target you hit automatically you don't have to actually aim or get the right shot on them they just do it automatically so but this is like one of my favorite rings the kaboomer ring as well um i like the multi ring a lot and taiwan just didn't really they well i think taiwan had all three of those rings but you didn't really get them towards till like towards the end this game you can get them like about the middle of the game and then just for the rest of the game you can just go around just blowing up all the frills and uber frills and any other enemies you fight it just makes the game a lot more enjoyable than just using the standard frosty ring and um lava not lava ring fire ring and all of that stuff so i like the fact that it has um gives you more options with gameplay because the boomerang gameplay is probably the best thing about this game because it's just different from any other game rather than just jumping on an enemy's head or spin dashing into them or spinning them around you actually use weapons that are based off of where the game is and they're actually fun and the you know the way that they're used is actually really creative so i like that about this game um what else can i say um trying to think so yeah i would say i would say tie 2 is really probably so far out of all the games i'll probably maybe my second second favorite walkthrough i'm gonna get into the first one but that'll be later on but um i think that this game this game was really fun to walk through, but it did have its issues, and that goes into the recording process. So, I um I enjoyed recording this game, but it had its complications because this was one of my uh, I actually recorded this game originally back in January when I took my vacation and stuff. I just went ahead and just brought my Switch with me and just recorded some recorded some games while we were in the middle of um doing the things we were doing for my birthday vacation but when I got back home it turns out that my settings for OBS were not um as they are on my my um computer at home so I ended up picking up echo while I was talking and it just wouldn't have been a good experience so I had to do it a second time he just killed me jeez so um I had to do it a second time sorry about that I, I saw this video so many times it just he just literally just jumped and just killed me I hated that so much when I played it but um, getting back to track, so I played it again on the PlayStation because I owned it on the Switch and on the PlayStation. Um, I was able to get through most of it, but some issues happened on the PS4, and it ended up messing some up the some up mess up some of the recordings, like this one. This one I had to go back and beat the game. Well, not beat the game, but just go back and play through the game again to get to this part, so I can beat him, so I can have the recording. But other than that, that outside of that, it was just. It wasn't too. It wasn't too bad. I mean, could have wished I only had to play the game through once and then just had a recording off the switch and then call it a day. But it is what it is. Um, I'm just glad that I was actually able to share the experience with you guys and so you could see one of my favorite games and stuff. So I think it worked out really well. But all in all, I think this is a really good game. This is. I would say that this is a big improvement from the second. I mean, not the second. The first game. I say the first game was okay but it had its um it had its growing pains considering that it was just you know it was a new game new series so it's like oh they had to work things out but by the time they got to this game which how i am with a lot of games i ended up liking the sequel more than i like the original game i think this game was really good i would say i'd probably give it maybe i don't know i'm probably giving maybe a 7.5 8 especially in terms of platformers it's, it's a really like i don't say middle of the road i'll say it's probably like a B plus type platforming game. It's not as great as the big giants like Mario and Crash and Sonic and all of that, but it's for what it is, it's really good. I think 
I think you should definitely check it out if you're really big into platforming games. You can get a good laughs out of the dialogue. The dialogue's really funny, and then I think the Boomerang um, core gameplay loop is really cool because it's like they give you all these tools to use and stuff, and you can use them a variety of ways, and you get different results and stuff like that. So I think it's really cool, but um, I'm going to check in with you guys later. Um, like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. There'll be more reflections coming soon. I'm probably going to, I don't know what game I'm going to do next. We'll just figure it out through there. I want to make sure I get through all the games that I've already beaten now before I start any new games. So that way you'll have my thoughts on how I felt about the game and the process of making it and stuff. And if I liked it or not. So if you guys enjoyed, then I'll see you guys later. Keep it gaming.